All right. Hi, everyone. How are you all? Almost there, almost there. All right. I'm very excited to be a speaker for this conference. I remember uh, last year, the first one virtual, Aya from my team did the presentation, and it was one of the best sessions rated out there. Very good job. And then we wanted to better than that this time, right? So guess what? I think there were a lot of, I learned a lot just in the last two days talking to a lot of you guys. Really, really, I want to congratulate each and every one of you. This is a very, very, very big milestone. Congratulations, guys. All right. I am Srinivas Perry. I am a director of Ethos uh, Cloud Platform. And today I'm going to share here the story of what we learned. All right. Uh, this slides are moving, I guess. All right. Yeah. So before we go deep into the uh, technology, I think let me just uh, hide the high level. Uh, we have thousands of services. Adobe has lots, thousands of services, right? Where are all these services? So there are three clouds, document cloud, creative cloud, and the experience cloud, which are powered by lots of products and services, and which in turn depends on lots of platforms, machine learning platform, content platform, data platform. All these services are built on top of Ethos, which you see at the bottom, which is built on top of AWS, Azure, and we also have a data center. So let's pause here for a second, right? I think. Uh, when we say a developer experience, what exactly do we mean by developer experience, right? Let's take some personas. So you are a developer, and you just started in a new company or started a new project, and you have to get going, right? So you probably are thinking about which tech language I should use, and how do I get started, what libraries I should use, what are the secure frameworks, and everything that related to about the local development. So what, do, what are we doing right now to solve the pain for the developer, right? At Adobe, we have some of the, uh, some, we, we have uh, tools to generate the initial thing, and we also have developed ASR. We talk, gave a talk a little bit earlier today, which is Adobe service runtime for the Java libraries. The glass is half full and half empty, but we have some story going on here, right? So the second one, integrate and deploy, that is what this is all about, and that's where we are using Argo a lot, and we will talk about it. And last one, operate and improve. Uh, again, I would say uh, we have a lot of tools and lots happening, but still, again, glass is half full and half empty, and I'm looking forward to learning a lot what Intuit has built around uh, MLOps. All right. So uh, let's talk about a little bit of a journey that we have gone through uh, in the last few years. There is also a lot of journey even before 2015, which I'm not going to talk about because there is not enough space there. Okay. Uh, so 2015, if you think about what happened in 2015, right, if you have followed, Adobe is one of the successful companies who have already implemented the subscription and Wall Street has already started rewarding us. We are already there. We are a cloud company. Everything is working, right? So uh, uh, what is there? Like, I, so then... It was all done by 500 plus AWS accounts, 10,000 plus Jenkins machines. It's all working, right? Okay, so let's do something about it. So we said, okay, containers are also coming along. Okay, let's start a platform, right? We started a platform. Looked around and saw two options, right? DC voice and Kubernetes. DC voice is used by a lot of big companies, Apple and everybody else, and Kubernetes in nascent stages. Uh, so we made a decision. Yeah, okay, let's go with... Uh, uh, DC voice, but one of the smart decisions we made during that time is let's build an abstraction. We did build an abstraction for developer experience in 2016. Whoo, big deal, right? I will tell you a little bit about how it has helped us. So uh, we built an abstraction for developer experience and we got all the DC voice clusters. Platform is all building, right? So that's great. So what, what are the what big lessons that I want to learn from here is build an abstractions when you have to. Let's move on. Building a platform is one thing, and getting it adopted by everybody else is at another thing, right? So what did we do? We have done something, what we called as a platform champion, right? So pretty much in every product team, we went there, we sat, we went to that location, we made a road trip, we went there, sat down for a week, and then we told them that we are coming, and then block your sprint, come down, come your, your laptop, and they leave the week, 
with one of the service working, right? So that's how we were in a single calendar year, we were able to get the number of services from two digit to four digit. Thousand plus services in a single calendar year. In a DC voice. Oh, cool, awesome, 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 awesome. Great story, we were all clapping exactly like this. Then what happened is Kubernetes matured. Guys, Kubernetes has matured, so it's time. It's time to, oh, Kubernetes, what about this Kubernetes we should do? Then our abstraction came in very, very handy. We have used, we have built a lot of migration tools, and again, we call it as a migration as a product, and we were able to, while everybody was deploying, while it is uh, flying, we shifted the DCOS clusters into the Kubernetes clusters. Thousands of services, right? Big, big, big achievement for all of us, okay, which, which is great, okay? That, clap again, clap again, please. Exactly, that's, that's what we were clapping also. <laughs> then what happened is, so with Kubernetes, uh, uh, we were also, we could do something that we did not do with DC voice, right? With Kubernetes, we gave two offerings. Internally, we call them as a CAS and PaaS, and Rohan also published a blog around this. So essentially, think of CAS as a paved path, and PaaS, go wild, DIY. Give you a namespace, do whatever you want. And we could not keep up with the pace of the Kubernetes innovation, and all the stuff that we did for the abstraction behind it, it's all homegrown tools, right? Uh, so we had two offerings. We said, go use the DIY pass path, right? Guess what? While this all is happening, the number of services on the paved path was 3,000 plus to celebrate, but the number of percentage of the namespaces that are on the pass are like 80% of them. Essentially, the problem when we started, when we have a lots of Jenkins, everybody's doing DIY, guess what? There's a, there's a spin occurs out there, there's everything out there, and then we have that uh, so That's when Argo came to rescue. Hey! <laughs> Why? Why? I mean, we looked at it. GitOps is coming up. Cool, awesome. What is the best GitOps tool out there? Right? Uh, and then, uh, definitely, we want to this time learn from what we have learned in the past and then Kubernetes and then Kubernetes native and all that stuff. So we put together a hackathon, we put together some teams and then we were able to build a solution. I'm happy to tell you all that we are going GA in three weeks, uh, that's where. Before you guys clap, there are two important points I want to kind of mention, okay? Whenever you do a project like this, it's not a, a fancy technology, you are going in a room and then you come together, hey product, do you want to take it? It doesn't work that way. You need to work with your lighthouses. I want to call out if the lighthouse, my team, lighthouse teams are here, my two lighthouse teams, which are sitting right there, their support, without their support, it does not happen. Right from the get-go, they are telling us, this is what we need, this is what we need, just build it enough so that, does it have a, is it really worth it? Right? Do we have to do it? They helped a lot in helping the shaping the flexible CI CD that we are talking about. Without that, we could not happen it. Let's give a big round of applause to our lighthouse teams. <laughs> Second thing I want to call out is, think about the engineering team that is going through this transition. They build a lot of software, and after some time, they are moving on to the next one, right? It takes a lot of guts and energies to be able to, don't attach it to the stuff that you are doing it, as you're moving along, do it enough and then move on, right? I, I want all the Adobe, my Adobe Argonauts to get up. Let's give them a big, uh, uh, please stand up. Please stand up, all of you. Let's give them a big round of applause. And there are many on the uh, call list. All right. Is it feeling good so far? Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Um, uh, again, I think there are a few more things that I want to um, I want to go over as well. I hope this is moving on. Yeah. So uh, I wrote a, a paper. Uh, please uh, go and take a look at it. I think uh, each one of these box, I touched on some of them. If I really have time, oh, there's still two more minutes. I can touch on one of them. So my favorite one is perfection, uh, perfection versus progress, right? Um, I struggle a lot in conveying. I mean, in general, these things are that part of it. I think making a uh, good enough progress, 
I am not saying don't write unit tests, don't write unit tests, <laughs> please do all of that, okay? But just enough so that you are able to kind of make progress on it one, right? I think that is some of the important things that we have to learn because some of them may not stick, some of them we have to go away, right? Uh, and uh, for the developers who are just starting, I think it is very, very important that the way technology is all moving along, we, they have to, we have to invest on both breadth and depth. Take one thing, scaling, deployment, achieve one of them, go deep, deep, deep into it, open the source code, whatever is needed. It takes 10,000 hours to be able to build that subject matter expertise, right? You need to build one of them. And you need to also build the depth, uh, breadth, right? Because we, we have to be on on-call. I mean, when the 1,000 plus developers or uh, 5,000 plus developers are asking you these questions and then we can't, I mean, we have to rotate things. We should know, we should be using our product. So I think, uh, I think we, are, we are going decently well there, but I think it's an ongoing challenge for us. Okay, we are not done it. There's a lot, there's a lot we have to kind of, uh, as we move along, I think uh, hopefully by next ArgoCon when I come, I will put a check mark on the second one and probably the third one will be green uh, or maybe even check mark. So I think there are, there are quite a few things, there are at least four things that uh, we don't have right now and then we will be uh, thinking about building it as we go along, right? Um, we still are, uh, the infrastructure provisioning and as far as the, the stuff that cross-plane and us are trying to address, I think we, we have a Terraforms all over and then that is something that we need to do about it. And we don't have a unified portal. We did not bring all of them together. And backstage is still not uh, um, cutting for us. Uh, I wish there's a still a journey there. So that, those are the things that we need to kind of do. And what Ed talked about and what you guys talked about, AI and observability, right? For sure that is a space that we have to invest on. So I'm saying, please help us, help each other. Let's make this community even better, even bigger. And we are doing, uh, for those of you who registered, coming to Adobe office today, uh, tomorrow, please uh, participate. Uh, we are doing some brave attempt. There are two things which are difficult in the software industry, naming and caching, right? So <laughs> tomorrow we are attempting to kind of mental model the whole internal developer experience, the boxes, uh, and then try to connect them. I'm looking forward to see you all tomorrow. Take care.